Extra Minutes. Do you think when giving evidence or when coming to their conclusions that the medical experts relied on what they knew or were they relying on a gut instinct? There are four deaths in this family. It has to be suspicious. They're human beings. They look at a family that has four kids dead and they feel as uneasy as any of us would feel in the same position. And there are times, and perhaps this case is an example of such a time, where maybe that unease as a human being overrides the training. Do you accept that four deaths in the one family is suspicious? Oh, absolutely. We live in an era in which it's rare for infants to die. And I certainly accept that when any child dies, what we would like to see and what we should see is the most thorough possible investigation of how that death has occurred and great attention paid to making sure that we prevent future deaths. When it's more than one child, then questions have to be asked about is there a genetic factor here, is there an environmental factor here, is there some possibility of foul play? Those things should be looked at carefully and they're pri primarily the preserve of the pathologists and of the death investigation system. The point at which it all comes into a courtroom, it's important to start from the premise that this accused is innocent and to think very carefully and very hard about what information might move us from that point. Do you think when Kathleen Folbig was put on trial that the premise was that she was innocent until proven otherwise? That was the legal premise. I'm not sure that in the way in which the evidence came out and in the way in which the case was occasionally argued that that was always stuck to. I think there were times when her incapacity to offer an explanation for her children's death became very important and that's inappropriate. As a mother accused of, of murdering four babies, how do you prove your innocence? Well, you can't and it's not your job to. A mother who has suffered the deaths of four children and who's likely to be blaming herself because all of the research shows that that's what mothers do when they experience even a single death is in no position to explain what might have happened. But I think that underlying the premise that three or more sudden infant deaths in a family are homicide until proven otherwise is a reversal of the onus of proof. Having gone through the trial as you did, yeah. was there any forensic evidence that proved there was homicide? There was no positive evidence of homicide in relation to any child. Again, do you believe they were murdered? No, I don't. The conclusion I reach in the book is that she was wrongly convicted and by that I mean that the court didn't have enough evidence to carry it to proof beyond a reasonable doubt. The question of factual innocence, as I've said, came for me later after I'd started to correspond with Kathleen and nonetheless tempered through the fact that there are posit positive indicia of factual innocence. That's important in a human sense, it's hugely important. From the point of view of the integrity of the criminal justice system, it's even more important that the process works according to how it should, which means that the evidence adds up to proof beyond a reasonable doubt. And so it was very important for you to have a dispassionate view. It was hugely important for me to have a dispassionate view. What do you think should happen? I think that her case needs to be reviewed. Um, and I suspect that if it were carefully reviewed, that the reviewing body would come to the conclusion that her conviction is not sound. So she should walk. She should walk.